we want to remind you there is a theory that the first heels were worn by Persian cavalry, cavalry men during the Middle Ages because it helped them ride horses. But by the start of the 19th century, heels and other clothing accessories like purses were considered effeminate. In the 1960s, we saw men wearing platform boots, but only women were wearing stilettos. The oldest known purse dates back more than 5,000 years, and they were worn by men. In the 90s, we saw the emergence of the purse or man purse. There are some men who love wearing heels and purses. It's a trend we've seen growing as of late on TV, like shows like Atlanta Real Housewives of Atlanta, but I've noticed a trend happening right here in Houston, and that's why we have these people on the Factor Uncensored. Glad to have you joining us on the Factor, Gabriel, Gia, Joshua, and Chris Dion. Glad to have you all on the Factor Uncensored. So, you've been on before, yes, and we've <laughs> seen this trend on Real Housewives of Atlanta where men wear purses and uh, heels and, and the jeans and all. What do you call that, Joshua? Well, we don't call purses anymore. We call them bags. Okay, yeah. bags. That's another yeah, bag. Yeah, yeah. We don't, yeah, we don't carry purses. We carry handbags. Okay, got it. Uh, we call it basically us. I mean, I feel like when we do it, a lot of women try to do it also. Uh -huh. um, you have to realize, like, we so have they're jocking your style. Basically. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, you have shows like Pose and all them shows now where it shows the beginning where it started from. Mm -hmm. Voguing, when men vogue it in heels. And look at the ballerina dancers when they He's up high and they're wearing Louboutins. A lot of men been wearing heels, like you said, since the beginning of time. We have mm -hmm. artists like Prince, we have Rick James, Michael we have Michael Jackson, Jackson. Mm -hmm. we have all those artists wore platforms. Mm -hmm. And even like the Jackson 5 did. So I think that it just came on over to our culture now when it's even bigger now with men in heels and bags. Chris, let's bring you into this conversation. Okay. Is it ever difficult to walk out that door? How difficult was it the first time <laughs> to walk out that door with a bag and heels. For me, it actually wasn't that difficult the first time because I was already like comfortable with myself. And you know, my personality, I've always not really cared what other people thought about me. Yeah, but we've seen you at Bell Station. <laughs> <You don't care. laughs> I'm very comfortable with myself. So now what was hard was walking in the heels uh -huh. because it's, it's a challenge. So you have to know what you're doing. Don't go too high with your heel height <laughs> if you can't do it. But for me, stepping out the door and being comfortable, it wasn't hard at all. <laughs> Gabriel, let's bring you into this conversation. Uh, was it difficult for you to first start doing this? Um, yes and no. Definitely. Um, I mean, yes in a sense that it's being gay is scary, first of all, walking out the door. You don't know, you know, you have opinions, you have you have stereotypes, you have this, and to me, if you're closed-minded and you, you don't know what gay is, then then yes, it's scary. Mm -hmm. But, um, I mean, I I love myself, I love who I am. Mm -hmm. um, and to me, wearing a heel, um, it makes me feel good. Mm -hmm. I walk out the house, Very I own it, I okay. strut, okay, I, I love it, so. And yes, Gia, and your no. situation is different because you consider yourself female. Yes. And that's it. Yes, I can. I am a trans woman. Mm -hmm. um, just started my transition, but I can relate with Gabriel and, and Chris and um, Gorgeous here. Mm -hmm. um, as far as walking out the, the door and knowing, and kind of feeling a little afraid or not really knowing if like, oh, this is going to be the night, but you got to own it. Like Gabriel said, you just got to put the heels on. Don't go too high. You're correct. Don't go too high because you might fall. Yeah. And just own it and walk out and be you. And I mean, hey, let them hate. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Just let it And you say, hey, shoulder. do you find a lot of hate out there? Oh, God. Well, I can only speak for myself. Mm -hmm. And fortunately, I do surround myself with a lot of positive people, people who love and support me with friends and family. Um, I'm not going to say that I have not run into the hate, of course, but I definitely don't try to pay any mind to it. I, what are we going to do? I, I mean, I can only educate these people. I can't fix them, you mm -hmm. know, so if that makes any sense. But right. it just is what it is. And I like, like I said, I surround myself with positive people and people who support me and support what I stand for. And that's just sort of how I get through. Joshua, when I, I mentioned hate, <laughs> I think for me, a little bit different. I came out at 14. Mm. And so I got into the gay culture a little bit 
faster. Uh, I moved here when I was 17, getting ready to go to Texas Southern for college. Mm -hmm. And so I wore heels when I fresh went to college, my freshman year. I started wearing heels. Uh, my best friend what who lived. What was that like, though, to be on a um, college campus and wearing heels? Well, I mean. What kind of response? Well, let's say the response get? was that when I first went there, uh, 2000. I'm not going to say my age. <laughs> but uh, when I say when I first started doing it, it was weird because people didn't understand because, I, I, first of all, I didn't have any hair yeah. on my head. Uh, number two is that uh, I also was a cheerleader mm -hmm. and I also danced at Texas Southern. So it was also like, okay, we see that side of him. But I think for me it was just weird because I didn't know how much it would be so bad. You know, mm -hmm. I got put down a lot by uh, teachers, um, administration asked me what was going on. Um, but I think that it helped later on with other students that came in was like, oh my God, I'm comfortable. Right. Right. Yeah. I think at my adult years, now that I'm in my 30s, I think that, because I wear heels every day, I don't, there's no stopping ground for me. I think that a lot of people look at me and say, oh my God, he's so comfortable. He's been comfortable for the last 13 years plus. What, what's going on? And so I don't see hate now, but my early years, oh God, yeah, mm -hmm. it was a lot. Mm -hmm. And Chris, let's bring you back into the conversation. Mm -hmm. For those who may be struggling with this as a, a teenager, what would you tell them? What advice would you give them? I would let, I would tell them just be yourself. For me, once my parents, and that's mom and dad specifically, accepted me, I really didn't care if people thought I was weird or mm -hmm. thought I was different. Agreed. And okay. it's good to be different sometimes. So I would just tell them, listen, if you want to put on a pair of heels, if you want to wear a purse and you pay for that purse and them heels, <laughs> you wear it. Wear it. Go for it. That's All right, Gabriel, final word from you. When you see people criticize for wearing the bag and the heels, your thought? Um, I mean, it's, it's pretty sad. Um, but I mean, the way I see it is, rock it, rock it, mm -hmm. let them hate, yeah, rock right. it. You know, I can't tell you how many times I've had women come up to me and say, dang, I wish I can do my makeup and wear heels like you. I wish I can own my outfit. Mm -hmm. Don't let your outfit own you. You own your outfit. Great. You rock mm -hmm. it and you let it come from inside and how you feel and rock it, own I've, it. I've even had guys come up to me and say, man, you're doing your thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. You're doing your yeah. thing. So, you know, you never know. Yeah.